so the topic for discussion today is uh, mostly absolute value functions and uh, we'll look at uh, a little bit of quadratic functions as well okay so what are absolute value functions so absolute value functions are also popularly known as mod functions or modulus functions okay so they are represented as mod of x uh, so you just put anything in a bracket so this is this is how you write uh, absolute value function so what it does is it reports the magnitude or the absolute value of uh, any function okay so if uh, if the thing inside the mod you call this these lines as mod so if the thing inside the mod if it is uh, positive to begin with you report it as it is if it is negative to begin with you multiply it with a negative sign that is you make it positive so the final output is uh, basically positive such a light huh so the final output is uh, basically the positive value or the magnitude of uh, this particular function. Okay. Uh, absolute value function is commonly used to determine the distance between the two numbers uh, on the line. Okay, so for example, I am interested in uh, the distance between the points of uh, 3.5 and 7.3. Suppose I on the real number line, I'm interested in the distance between the points 3.5 and 7.3. So what's the distance? So the distance between these two points can be given by mod of 3.5 minus 7.3, which incidentally is also equal to mod of 7.3 minus 3.5. Right? So it does not matter what uh, which number you put first. Okay, so in certain situations, it might not be obvious to us ki which number you should subtract from okay so in this case i know for a fact that 7.3 is larger so i would go ahead with this kind of nomenclature but if i ask you let's say uh, the distance between points x and y then you do not know uh, exactly which of these points is larger so the general way to write is that the distance between the points x y is equals to mod of x minus y then it does not matter even if uh, y is greater than x even in that case this thing is going to be the right thing okay so uh let's have a look at how it works so 7.3 minus 3.5 so this is going to be uh modulus of 3.8 right and uh, this thing is going to be modulus of minus 3.8 right which is still going to be equal to 3.8 so both these values are equal to 3.8 okay so that's uh, one way where uh, modulus is used it is used to find the distance between two points so suppose i write uh, the distance find points on the real number line real number line which are at a distance of 3 from uh, from the point uh, from the point 5 so at a distance of 3 from the point 5 okay so this is let's say my question so the solution is very straightforward suppose that point is x then the solution says that the modulus of x minus phi that is the distance of the point from phi this should be equal to 3 all right so x minus phi should be equal to 3 now this uh, opens up to two different possibilities so after this we have two different possibilities either x minus phi should be equal to 3 or x minus phi should be equal to minus 3 Right. If you consider this possibility, then we see that x is equals to 8 and we consider this possibility, then we see that x is equals to 5 minus 3. So that is equal to 2. 
So x equals to 8 and x equals to 2 are both correct answers. So you can substitute it here. When you substitute x equals to 8 here, this becomes mod of 8 minus 5. So that is equals to 3. And when you substitute x equals to 2 here, in this equation, this becomes mod of 2 minus 5, that is equals to mod of minus 3, so that is also equal to 3. So these are both correct answers. So this is essentially how we are going to solve our modulus based question by making cases. Okay, so this is how you are going to solve all modulus based question. So let me ask you a question. Uh, find points. This is the one that you are supposed to solve. Find points at a distance of 2.5 from the point 1. The distance is 2.5 from the point 1. So what points am I talking about? See, I want everybody to give at least one answer. See, don't, uh, don't give me one answer. There are two answers here. I'm asking you points. So I'm asking you points. So I obviously there are two answers. Yes, Ajit has it. Everyone missed the negative sign. So, so yeah, most of you got it. Okay, so the points are uh, three point five and one. Okay, so uh, another way to do this would be at a distance of uh, uh, two point five from the point one. So another way it would be to do just one plus two point five and one minus two point five. Okay, this is another way uh, to do this. So x equals to one plus two point five or x equals to 1 minus 2.5. So this answer would be 3.5 and this answer would be minus 1.5. So this is another way to do it. Uh, so in the exam, you can either make cases to begin with or based on your experience, you can make shortcuts. Uh, no, Alam, it's not 1 and 3.5. It's uh, minus 1.5 and... Uh, uh, minus 1.5 and 3.5 okay so i hope there is no doubt uh, if there is i can go over it again but the idea is you can make cases so initially what i want all of you is to be uh, methodological about it okay don't make shortcuts in the initial days uh, write down every step that uh, so the steps are very uh, simple so uh, so you write down that x minus uh, 1 is equals to 2.5, right? So this implies that uh, x minus 1 is equals to 2.5 or x minus 1 is equals to minus 2.5. So what this means is that x equals to 1 uh, plus 2.5 or x equals to 1 minus 2.5. So this gives me x equals to 3.5 or x equals to minus 1.5. So you have to be methodological about it. You cannot make shortcuts in the initial few days because if you do, you will not learn the theory and you will lose faith in your ability to solve it. And then you will basically lose confidence that you can do it. So go by step by step. That would be the best thing to do. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Let's look at this example. This example says that describe all values of x within a distance of 4 from the number 5. Okay, so what this is saying is, I want all values of x which are less, which are living less than four units away from the number five. Okay, so the distance 
of this uh, point x is such this point x is such that its distance from the number phi is less than or equal to 4. So this is how you set up an inequality. Okay, so this is an inequality. So all those points x which are at a distance less than or equal to 4 from the point phi. Okay, uh, so this is uh, what we want to solve. Okay. Uh, so these are things which we'll be doing a lot uh, in uh, when we come to stats. In stats, when we will be building confidence intervals and things like that, uh, we'll be doing a lot of such uh, things uh, of making uh, by making confidence intervals. So what is uh, mod of x minus phi less than equals to four? Okay, yes, uh, those are the correct answers, but uh, you are only considering uh, integral values right now. I'm not. In yesterday's class, I in day before yesterday, I told you that the default that we consider is R. The default for math is R. If nothing else is told, you assume that X belongs to real numbers. And when you say X belongs to near numbers, then you cannot just report integral values. You have to inter report inter uh, intervals to me. So I'll uh, come back to that. <clears throat> uh, first, I want to look at what the graph of this thing looks like. Okay, so what will the graph of this function look like? So f of x equals to mod x. So let's start with the very basic thing f of x equals to mod x. which is basically equals to x for x greater than or equals to 0 and minus x for x less than 0, right? So, if this is your x values and this is your y values, right? So, for positive x, that is in this region, function is y equals to x, which will be basically a straight line like this. Okay, and in the negative territory, functions behave as minus x, so it will look like this. Yeah, so this is what the function will look like. So suppose I am interested in mod x is less than or equal to 3. Suppose I am interested in solving x. Suppose I am asking find x such that mod x is less than or equal to 3. All right. Uh, so what I will do is I will draw a line parallel to the x, x axis along the y equals to 3 point. Okay. And then I will note down these two intersections. So this is the line y equals to x. This is the line y equals to x. This is the line y equals to minus x. This uh, horizontal line is y equals to 3. So y equals to 3. Uh, so this point, what would this point be? This point is intersection of y equals to 3 and y equals to x. So this point is 3 comma 3. So this point will be 3 comma 0. Right. And this point would be minus 3 comma 0. Hmm. So notice that the, the actual curve that I am interested in is this red line. This red line is the actual curve that I am interested in. And he's asked me mod x less than or equals to 3. That is all the values for which this red curve lies below this blue dashed line. Okay. So that one, that region is this region. In this region, the red curve lies below the uh, horizontal blue line. Okay. Uh, I'll make it less cluttered. So, this is the region that I'm interested in. So, x mod x less than equals to 3 implies x belongs to the set minus 3 to 3. Alright. So, for x in this region, which corresponds to this region on the x-axis, 
your functional value that is mod x will be less than or equal to 3. All right. So a word on the brackets. So the type of brackets that you can see are this. Uh, these are closed brackets. These are open and these are curly. Closed, open and curly. All right. So to elaborate this thing, one comma two, this means that only points one and two, nothing else, just the points one and two. Okay. So curly brackets can have multiple things between uh, written inside them. So one, two, three, this also makes them sense. This will mean that points one, two, three, they are included in the set. All right. Then there is closed brackets, one, two. This means that all points between one, two and one and two also included. Okay, so closed one, two, two means everything between it is included and uh, those points are included as well. So on the real number line, if this is one and this is two, this set looks like just these two points. Okay, uh, this set will look like one, two, three, these three points. Okay, and uh, this set will look like these points. Oh, sorry, uh, where is the highlight? Yeah, all these points. And the final thing is uh, open bracket. So open bracket would be one, two. This means all points between one and two, excluding one and two. Okay, so it would be one, two, but not including the boundary points. Okay, so it would be like this. One and two are not included. Okay, one and two are not included. All right. Uh, a set like one, two, three, this does not make sense. This is nothing. It becomes vector actually. So uh, this is nothing uh, in the, uh, we'll have such things coming in vectors, but uh, here this set doesn't make sense. Here we are talking about sets. So this thing still makes sense, but uh, three elements in closed or open bracket doesn't make sense. Also, you can have brackets like these. These also make sense. This means that all points between one and two and uh, one is included, but two is not included. So one, two, so all points between one and two are included, but two is not included. Okay. Similarly, you can have one, two, wherein two is included, but one is excluded. So these are different kinds of sets that uh, we can observe. So here we are saying mod X less than equals to three. So mod X being equal to three, is allowed to me. So that's why I'll include minus three and three in my final answer. But uh, had you asked me find X such that mod X is strictly less than three, then the answer would have been X belongs to the set minus three to three. Now three is not allowed. Minus three and three are not allowed. as mod x uh, should be strictly less than 3 and never equal to 3. Okay, so mod x equal to 3 is not allowed anymore. So that's why uh, in this case, we exclude minus 3 and 3. Okay. All right. So now let's uh, see another example. Uh, let's say mod x minus 2 is less than 3, less than equal to 3. Let's say I'm interested in solving this kind of a situation. So I'm getting closer to the kind of problem that I'm going to solve here. So mod of x minus 2 is less than equals to 3. So how do I solve this? So the way to solve this is let x minus 2 is equals to t. Okay, then this equation becomes mod of t less than equals to 3. Right, so this is called substitution. 
Okay, so this technique is called substitution. Why we cannot take minus 3 and minus 3 is less than 3? No, minus 3 is less than 3, but mod of minus 3 is not less than 3. See, mod of x should be less than 3, not x less than 3. Mod of x should be less than 3. If you take x equals to minus 3, then this becomes, then if you allow x equals to minus 3, then you're basically saying mod of minus 3 is less than 3, which is not true because mod of 3 is actually equal to 3. Right, so that's why minus 3 is not allowed. So we are not saying x less than 3, we are saying mod x less than 3. All right, go back to the diagram. The diagram, what did it say? The diagram looked like this. All right, this is 3, this is minus 3 and this is 3. So it says that uh, our modulus has to be strictly less than uh, 3. So all these values are allowed, but the endpoints are not allowed. Because at the endpoints, the modulus becomes equal to 3. Okay, so these, this is my function f of x. The modulus becomes equal to 3 here. So these points are that, that's why not allowed. Okay, uh, coming back to this problem. So I'm making a substitution mod t less than equals to 3. So mod t less than equals to 3 means what? Uh, t is, uh, t belongs to the set. Uh, uh, minus 3 to 3, right, close. So what you can write this as that minus 3 less than equal to uh, t less than equal to 3. So t is somewhere between minus 3 and 3. So you can write it in this manner. Okay. <coughs> All right. Now, uh, so then you can write this as this statement can be written as minus 3 less than equals to t and t less than equals to 3. Okay, so we talked about and and uh, conjunctions, disjunctions in the logic lecture. So you're saying that t satisfies these two conditions simultaneously. So t is a variable which belongs to minus 3 to 3. So on the real number line, okay, so on the real number line, t is a variable which is satisfying two conditions. Uh, t less than equals to minus 3. So this is minus 3 and this is 3. So my function, uh, my variable t is satisfying two conditions. One is t is greater than equals to minus 3. So it is to the right of minus 3. And the second condition is that t is less than equals to 3. So it is to the left of 3. So it satisfies these two conditions simultaneously. So when it satisfies these two conditions simultaneously, the set of points becomes the intersection of these two points, these two uh, regions, which is basically minus 3 to 3. So Bottom line is minus 3 less than equal to t less than equals to 3 is logically equivalent to minus 3 less than equal to t and t less than equals to 3. So you can break it up. You can break it up. Okay. So and this came from t belonging to minus 3 to 3. So all these three statements are logically equivalent. If you would have uh, seen the lecture, the yesterday's lecture on uh, logic. So what I'm trying to say is that these three things are logically equivalent. Now, from here, I can easily conclude from here. I can easily conclude that uh, I can make the substitution back. So this thing becomes minus three less than equals to. So remember that T was X minus two. So less than equals to x minus 2 and x minus 2 less than equals to 3. So this implies now I can just uh, put everything in perspective. So uh, minus 1 less than equals to x and uh, <coughs> x less than equals to 5. Okay, so minus 1 say bada hai x. 
So x has to be greater than minus 1 and less than 5. So this means that x belongs to minus 1 to 5. All right. So this is how you can do it. Now, obviously, as you do more problems, you'll get faster with it. So if I ask you mod x minus 2 less than equals to 3, you'll basically just say x minus 2 belongs to minus 3 to 3, which implies that then just add 2 in each of these things. So x belongs to uh, the, this minus 2 goes here. So you will do plus 2 here and plus 2 here. So minus 1 to 5. So that's the shortcut to do it. Okay, that's the shortcut to do it. But uh, it's good to know the longer method because as we'll do more complicated problems, you'll see that uh, shortcuts they have, uh, you might end up con getting confused using shortcuts. So it's good to know the, uh, the correct and long method. So coming back to this thing, mod of x minus 5 less than equals to 4. So you can easily solve this now. Mod of x minus 5 less than equals to 4. This implies x belongs to A to B. What are A and B? What are A and B? Guys, are you with me? I'm asking you, what are A and B? One and nine, yes, uh, that's correct. One and nine. If anybody at any point of time has a doubt, you should ask me then and there itself. Minus 1. Okay, so Tanvi, maybe you did a mistake. So this becomes x minus 5. Let's say it is equals to t. So going by the correct methodology, so we say t belongs to minus 4 to 4. Okay, uh, closed brackets. Hoga. Minus 4 to 4. This implies that uh, uh, minus 4 less than equal to t and t less than equals to 4. Okay, and then you substitute t equals to x minus 5. So minus 5, 4 less than equals to x minus 5. And uh, x minus 5 less than equals to 4. Okay, so this thing becomes, uh, you can take this minus 5 here. So this becomes 5 minus 4 less than equals to x. And x less than equals to 5 plus 4. So you get 1 less than equals to x. And x less than equals to 9 so x belongs to 1 to 9 so this implies that a equals to 1 and b equals to 9 okay uh everyone you take care of the brackets that you are using it is close bracket 1 to 9 open bracket 1 to 9 is the wrong answer okay so mindful of the brackets now that i have also given you a Refresher for the brackets. Uh, do remember to use the correct brackets. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, what does this uh, curve look like? What does this curve look like? Mod of x minus phi. So, let's try to draw this curve. Y equals to mod of x minus phi. Okay. So, what does this curve basically? look like to me uh, so on the real number line okay on the real number line uh, when does y become equal to zero so i know that since y is modulus of something y is always greater than equals to zero right uh, when does y become equal to zero y equals to zero at what x At what value of x will this function y become 0? 5. 
right so my original function it used to look like this which was becoming zero at origin but now this new function it will become zero at phi so that new function it will basically look like this so it's like you're shifting the function phi units to the right okay so y equals to x minus phi is basically shifting the original y equals to mod sorry mod of x minus phi is basically shifting the function phi units to the right and uh, y equals to mod of x plus phi is shifting it phi units to the left it will look like this okay now let's do another function uh, y equals to mod x minus phi plus 3 Okay, so what does the graph of this thing look like? So again, let uh, mod of x minus phi be equal to t. So if t equals to mod x minus phi, then t is always greater than equals to zero. Yeah, that, that's the nature of the modulus function. t is always greater than equals to zero. So t plus 3 will be always greater than or equal to 3. Yeah, exactly, Shreya. So it will be rightward shift by uh, phi units because of this x minus phi. So t is always greater than equals to zero. Now this uh, t function, if I want to plot the t function, the t function will be just a mod function, but it will be phi units to the right. Okay, so if this is my origin, this is x, then this will be my function t which is mod of x minus phi okay at uh, phi comma 0 now your function y is t plus 3 so it's just adding 3 units to the origin uh, to the function t so it will be 3 units above this so every point will go up by 3 units this point will come up by 3 units this point will come up by 3 units this point will come up by 3 units so all the points will shift up by 3 units so it will be 3 units parallel shift upward so from the original graph of mod x this is the graph of mod x and this is the graph of mod x minus 5 plus 3 so what you do is because of this minus 5 you move 5 units to the right and then because of this plus 3, you move 3 units up. Okay, so that's how you do it. You move right and you move up. <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, now, the impact of slopes. So, let's say I'm interested in y equals to mod of 2x. Okay. Uh, so, mod of 2x would be what this will be equal to 2x if x is positive and minus 2x if x is negative so what does it look like so let's draw the cartesian plane again okay so this is let's say y equals to x it looks like this y equals to mod x it looks like this Okay, so let's say this is y equals to mod x. Okay, so what will y equals to mod 2x look like? Can anybody take a guess what will y equals to mod 2x look like? Steeper. Yeah, that's correct. It's going to look like V, but steeper now. All right. So it's going to look like a steeper version of this thing. So it will look like this. All right. So this is your Y equals to mod 2X. Okay. So finally, uh, we are ready with all the tools for modulus linear functions at least. So suppose I'm interested in... Uh, y equals to mod of 2x minus 3 plus 5 oh no minus 5 plus 3 i'll stick to that minus 5 plus 3 
then uh, what the two does is this two i look at what everything does this will basically make my curve steeper steeper curve this phi will basically do shift my curve right and this 3 will basically shift my curve up all right <clears throat> so shift my curve right shift my curve up and all those things it's going to do so uh so as an example let's say i want to plot y equals to mod of uh, 3x minus 7 uh plus mm, plus 7 minus 5 let's say i'm interested in this curve now so i'm going to draw the cartesian plane meanwhile you guys also try drawing it in your notebooks and then we can uh, match if we both if you all get the correct uh, the same answer all right <clears throat> so firstly this is now plus 7 so it will be 7 units to the left so minus 7 comma 0 then this minus 5 is going to make it drop down to uh drop down by 5 units so this point is minus 7 comma minus 5 and from here we will have a slope 3 wala curve so slope 3 okay so slope three wala curve v hoga so it will be very very steep so this is uh, approximately what it would look like <clears throat> okay now suppose i am interested in finding the x intercepts of y suppose i am interested in finding the x intercepts so what are x intercepts x intercept is when y becomes equal to 0 right so x intercept is basically y becomes equals to 0 okay so i am interested in mod of 3x plus 7 minus 5 equals to 0 okay so what are going to be the x intercepts so mod of 3x plus 7 is equals to 5 okay which implies 3x plus 7 equals to 5 or 3x plus 7 equals to minus 5 two cases so 3x plus 7 equals to 5 gives me the answer that uh, 3x equals to minus 2 so x equals to minus 2 by 3 and this gives me 3x equals to minus 12 so x equals to minus 4 right so the answer is uh, minus 4 here and minus 2 by 3 here yeah. uh okay <clears throat> what about uh, x y intercept what about the y intercept what will be the y intercept y intercept is x being equal to 0 so what will be the y intercept 2 great so i just put x equals to 0 so h it mar jayega okay it dies so, so this becomes mod of 7 minus 5 so this point becomes uh, 0 comma 2 okay all right so let's look at this curve okay so i hope all of you can read graphs so this point is uh, minus 2 comma 3 so 3 comma minus 2 okay uh what is this function going to be like suppose this is a question so how do we find it 
so there are three elements to any modulus function first is slope then is its uh, left or right shift so shift along the x axis let me call it a and then shift along the y axis that is b so given any three parameters you get y equals to mx minus a comma mod plus b okay so shift a units to the right and b units up so that would be my mx minus a plus b so in this case the shift to the right is 3 units okay so a becomes equals to 3 shift down is by 2 units so b becomes equal to minus 2 the only thing remaining is m so how do i find m so you can use the slope of this segment to find m so this point you know is 3 comma minus 2 this point you know is uh uh 2 comma 0 right so you can use the slope between these two points to find m so m will be equal to delta y by delta x so in mod of m will be equal to delta y by delta x the magnitude we are only interested interested in the magnitude so delta y is 0 minus minus 2 so that is 2 uh so m equals to mod of this thing hmm. So modulus of uh, delta y by delta x because I am only interested in the magnitude of the slope right now. So zero uh, minus minus two is uh, zero minus minus two upon uh, delta y is zero minus minus two delta x two minus three. Okay, so this is two upon minus one comma modulus, so that is two. So m becomes equal to two. Okay, so this function becomes a is three, b is minus two. So this function becomes y equals to mod of two x minus three minus two. Okay. Oh sorry. Oh, I have not been putting this. Uh, <clears throat> i have been committing this mistake here uh, i have not been putting this bracket here twice into x minus 3 i just realized this by looking at here okay uh, yeah so correct me uh, here this should have been three times into x plus 7 here also i should have put a modulus here and uh, so a bracket here and here also i should have put a bracket here okay so that's uh, this two has to be common only in that case uh, it becomes uh, shift by 3 units and so on so the two has to be common okay uh right so the slope m uh the slope m gets multiplied with everything inside the modulus so you can even write this as y equals to twice mod x minus 3 minus 2 so this is also a valid way to write it okay uh so here's what the difference so, so just uh to clarify on that mistake that i did y equals to uh 2x minus 3 uh minus 2 this is basically twice of mod x minus 1.5 minus 2 so this would be just 1.5 units to the right whereas uh, y equals to twice mod x minus 3 minus 2 this would be 3 units to the right so this function will be here whereas this function it would no. this function it would be two units to the right but it would be at minus 3 this point would be minus 3 comma minus 2 3 comma minus 2 and whereas this function it would look like this it would be at uh, 1.5 comma minus 2 okay so that's the mistake i did the two should have been common <clears throat> generally we don't see a lot of graphs but uh, this uh, problem set which i'll upload on in the study material you will see some uh, different functions jiska tumko graph nikalna hai the answers are given in the end so you can check it from there i can look at the different answers uh let's do a few more problems Uh, 
Yeah, so this is just finding the horizontal intercept and the vertical intercept. So that's uh, x intercept and y insert intercept. Uh, absolute value inequalities. So mod of x minus phi less than equals to four. So this is something we looked at. So mod of x minus phi less than equals to four basically is going to be this entire set. So between one and nine. So we also saw that. And uh, yeah, this seems like something new. F of x equals to minus half into uh, 4x minus 5 plus 3. Okay, so f of x equals to minus half uh, times 4x mod of 4x minus 5 plus 3. x minus 5 plus 3. <clears throat> okay, so if I take this out common, so this becomes, uh, uh, if I take 4 out here, so minus half into 4 into mod of x minus 5 by 4 plus 3, right? So this 4 and these things, they combine to give me minus 2. Okay, so it gives me minus 2 times x minus 5 by 4. Uh, so what this minus does is the, the graph is going to be an inverted V now. Okay, so the graph is going to be an inverted V. So the idea is that if you have the function y equals to minus mod x, it will be equal to minus x for x positive and x for x negative. Okay, because originally mod of x was x for positive x and minus x for negative x. So you put a minus in front of that. So you get minus x here and x here. So this graph, it would basically look like this. So it will now be a mountain shaped structure. So if there's a negative in front of uh, my modulus, then it will give me an inverted V structure or a mountain structure. So now I have a negative in front of my modulus. Okay. So the slope is going to be negative. All right. <clears throat> the rest of the things, they remain the same. So the slope is going to be negative, but it is still going to be the vertex. This point, if you call it as the vertex, the vertex is still going to be at plus 5 by 4. And the shift up or down. So shift up by three units. So the mountain will have its vertex at five by four at a height of three units. And the slope of the mountain is going to be minus two. So that's how you can do this. So minus five by four pay. So uh, five by four pay. So this is five by four. Five by four pay, you give it a height of three units and you draw a mountain here. So this will be your uh, y equals to minus 2 times x minus 5 by 4 plus 3. All right. Uh, what is the x intercept? So I have drawn it to the left of origin. It need not be. What is the x intercept here? What are the x intercepts? There are going to be two x intercepts. So what are going to be the x intercepts? Please tell me. So you have minus 2 times x minus 5 by 4 plus 3 equals to 0. So you get uh, minus 2 times mod of x minus 5 by 4 equal to minus 3. So you divide it. So you get mod of x minus 5 by 4 equals to 3 by 2. All right. So uh x minus 5 by 4 equals to 3 by 2 or x minus 5 by 4 equals to minus 3 by 2. So x equals to 5 by 4 
प्लस थ्री बाई टू और x इक्वल्स टू फाइव बाई फोर माइनस थ्री बाई टू सो द फर्स्ट आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी एक्स इक्वल्स टू फाइव बाई फोर प्लस थ्री बाई टू इज फाइव प्लस सिक्स बाई फोर एंड दिस इज फाइव माइनस सो थ्री बाई टू इज सिक्स बाई फोर सो फाइव माइनस सिक्स बाय फोर सो दिस गिवस मी एक्स इक्वल्स टू एलेवन बाय फोर और माइनस वन बाय फोर so minus 1 by 4 and 11 by 4 okay so these are going to be the intercepts so this point is minus 1 by 4 comma 0 and this point is 11 by 4 comma 0 okay so if this function was y and somebody asks you uh find x such that y is greater than or equal to 0 what values of x will you report What values of x will you report? Zero to eleven point four. No, it's not zero. So the function is positive everywhere above this in this yellow region. So between the intercepts, yes, Ajit. So that's the correct answer. So the answer for this one is for x belonging to uh, minus one by four to eleven by four close bracket. That is the correct answer. so now you have a fair bit of uh, understanding now if they ask you uh, for the same question if they ask you find x such that uh, y is less than or equal to 0 okay so for the same uh, function they are asking you x such that the y is negative so y is going to be negative in this region this region and this region okay so the this, this set this set will be negative infinity to minus 1 by 4 and this set will be 11 by 4 to positive infinity because it goes on till infinity till infinity it will always be negative all right so the negative set for y less than equals to 0 will be x belonging to negative infinity to minus 1 by 4 union 1 by 4 to infinity okay so this uh, is basically union union means you are taking both the sets uh, and so you are basically saying that let me call this as set a and set b okay so this statement says that x belongs to a or x belongs to b that's the idea of union so we are taking two sets together so this sort of addition of sets is known as uh, union so in me se koi bhi point tum le loge you can take x which belongs to the set a or you can take x which belongs to set b in that case you will have your f of x to be less than or equal to 0 okay so that's the idea all right so then you just have some more answers here now i'll pick take some questions from uh, the problem set that we have to discuss that you are supposed to do Okay. Okay. Let's look at uh, problem number two. So, problem number two is. <clears throat> one second, and close this one.
problem number two is uh, minus 15 less than equals to x less than equals to 7 can be expressed in this form where a and b are okay so uh, so how do i solve this okay so i start by doing this and i convert it into that inequality form that i was saying so mod of x minus a less than equals to b it implies that uh, uh, mod of x minus a so it implies that x minus a belongs to the set uh, minus b to b right so x minus a belongs to b to b so x belongs to uh, a minus b to a plus b so less uh, so a minus b less than equals to x less than equals to a plus b so now you have two equations to unknown a minus b is equals to minus 15 and a plus b is equals to 7 so you can find a and b okay, so that's how you can do it <coughs> all right uh, okay so question number four you can make a substitution okay. So you can make a substitution here that uh, x square minus 4, just give me a second and click this one off. Rest of the camera. Where was that? Uh, yeah, so you can just substitute x square equals to t. So let's take a general uh, problem of this format. So I'll take, I'll not take this question exactly. Let's take a question of this format. Let's say I'm interested in t minus 4, mod of t minus 4 is equals to mod of t plus uh sorry t square minus 4 is equals to mod of uh, t square minus 4 t minus 4 is equals to mod of t plus 3 right so let's say mod of t minus 4 is equals to uh, t plus 3. <coughs> so in this case, uh, what will happen is uh, that uh, you can take uh, one uh, negative signs on these two things. So one alternative would be t minus 4. So you cannot take situations like t minus 4 is equals to t plus 3. Okay, so if that kind of a thing is out of the question. All right, so uh, <clears throat> so one way to do this problem would be you can make a substitution that let uh, t minus four is equals to x. Okay, so this thing, so t plus three is basically t minus four plus seven, which is equals to x plus seven. So this thing becomes mod of x is equals to mod of x plus 7. Right? Mod x equals to mod of x plus 7. Now, how do you solve it? The way to solve this would be x is equals to minus of x plus 7 or x is equals to just positive x plus 7. But if you take this root, if you take this root, what you will get is xx cut jayega, you will get 0 equals to 7, which is a contradiction. So you cannot take something like this. Then the only option is x equals to negative of x plus 7. So when you take this root, you get 2x equals to minus 7, which implies x equals to minus 3.5. Okay.
so the example that i want you guys to do is mod of z minus 10 is equals to mod of z plus 12 so what is the value of z Okay, I'm getting three different answers in the first three answers. I like that. When I get a lot of different options, it gets interesting. Follow the steps, okay? So don't... Uh, making shortcuts is the dark side, okay? We should not go to the dark side yet, okay? Uh, don't make that uh, fatal error so early in your uh, uh, so early when we are trying to learn math all right first first problem do those things later on so z Actually, minus 10 is equals to negative of z plus 12 okay so what i get is that uh, z minus 10 is equals to minus z minus 12 so 2z is equals to 10 minus 12 which is equals to minus 2 so z equals to minus 1 so you can always check back okay so uh, so the answer is minus 1 let's say shreya gave me the answer 11 suppose i put 11 as the answer so here what i get is minus 11 minus 10 which is equals to 1 here i get my mod of 11 plus 12 which is equals to 23. So obviously it's wrong. 23 is not equal to 1. Okay. Uh, then uh, Ajit gave me the answer minus 11. So if I substitute that, I get my z of uh, z is minus 11, right? So minus 11 minus 10 is equals to mod of minus 21 and mod of uh, minus 11 plus 12 is equals to mod of 1. So that is equals to 1. So again, 21 is not equal to 1. So you can also substitute your answer back and check if the answer that you got is correct or not. Okay, so that would also be a good exercise uh, sometimes. Okay. All right, uh, let's do sixth. We'll not do, I'll not do six exactly because that's part of the homework, but let's do something uh, similar. Uh, so let's say I'm interested in mod of t minus 3 whole square minus uh, 40, 4 mod t minus 3 minus uh, plus 3 is equal to 0 or rather less than equals to 0. Okay. So I'm interested in solving find a, find t such that this thing holds true. Okay. So the first substitution that I do is I see mod here mod like t minus three mod t minus three. So what I do is let mod of t minus three be equal to x. So what this thing becomes is x square minus four x plus three is less than equals to zero. Now this is a quadratic. So how do you solve a quadratic? So here's the refresher on quadratic. Uh, the first thing you do is see, I don't want you to be solving quadratic. So whenever you get quadratic, the best way to do is go online quadratic equation solver. Okay, so there is quadratic equation solver or calculators uh, available online. So you just put in the values of uh, the, the variables and it will automatically give you the answer. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. So the standard form of any quadratic is ax square plus bx plus c. So if you compare this with the standard form, you see that a is equals to one. 
b equals to minus 4 and c equals to 3. So 1 minus 4 and 3. So when you substitute that 1 minus 4 and 3 here, 1 minus 4 and 3, you see the roots are 3 and 1. Yeah, that's where you see the roots. This is the general formula of a quadratic. So what does a quadratic look like? So for a positive, so whenever this a is positive, the quadratic basically looks like a u. And whenever this a is negative, the quadratic looks like a negative. All right. Now, where the x and y axis would be, that depends on what the values of the roots are. So, in this case, uh, my a is definitely positive and the roots that I obtain are uh, well, 1 and 3. Okay. So, 1 and 3 are the roots. So, roots are basically the values at which the function becomes 0. So, my x axis it should pass like this and these points need to be 1 and 3. So the y axis, it would be somewhere here. This is going to be my y axis. So this is what my quadratic would look like. 0 0.2, 4 oh, For this particular thing, let's, let's see, let's see. I don't know. I just made this question up. So I don't know what the answers answer are, but, uh, 0 0.2 comma 4.6 okay so t values okay let's see kya the answer let's see uh the idea right now is i'm first finding out the values of x for which this quadratic is going to be negative so i'm interested in x such that this inequality is solved okay so since my a in this case is positive i will have a curve like this now the values for which this is negative are going to be these values between one and three Okay, so I know that x should belong to 1, 2, 3. For, for let me call this as q of x. So for q of x to be less than equals to 0, my x should belong to 1, 2, 3, closed. Okay, had this been a strict inequality, then these values would have been open. Okay, but since I have a weak inequality, these brackets are going to be closed. 1, 2, 3. Right. Now, uh, what I got is, what do you have here? Yeah, so x should be between 1 and 3. Now, coming back, t minus 3 is equal to x. So, I know that mod of t minus 3 should belong to uh, 1, 2, 3. So this means that t should belong to just add 3 everywhere. So 4, 2, 6. So this is your final answer on the values of t. So t should belong to 4, 2, 6. Right. So I don't want you to solve the quadratic. If you get a quadratic, just find out what its roots are. And uh, if it so happens that the, you get a negative quadratic, negative quadratic is when this a is 0. So you will have a curve like this. And let's say the roots turn out to be uh, 4 and 7. So suppose I ask you q of x less than equal to 0. So the answer is going to be negative infinity to 4 and 7 to infinity. So q of x is less than equals to 0 for x belonging to if the roots are let's say 4 and 7 so x belonging to negative infinity to 4 union 7 to infinity okay so this is what uh, will happen for the quadratic situation okay uh, so these are going to take typically some time we also have a cubic here so cubic KLA also you need to go and solve for the cubic equation solver. I am going to do this particular problem, question number 15. I will look at this particular problem. The other problems, so, uh, they are not repetitive kind of problems. They are interesting problems. Every problem might have something new packed in it. So you might have to struggle a little bit. But let's look at question number 15. This is an interesting thing. So. Uh, x minus 1 upon x minus 2 
less than equal to x plus 2 upon x plus 3. Okay. All right. Now, when you see, when you're trying to solve a quadratic like this, the basic intuition which people have is to cross multiply and proceed. So that would become x plus 3 into x minus 1 less than equals to x minus 2 into x plus 2. And then you open up the bracket. So you get x square minus uh, sorry, plus 2x minus 3 less than equals to uh, x square minus 4x. x square minus 4. Then you cancel the x squares, so you get 2x less than equals to minus 1, so x less than equals to minus half. Alright? But this would have been the answer had the given equality been this. But this is not the given equality. The given equality is this. You cannot directly cross multiply. The reason you cannot cro directly cross multiply is because when you're cross multiplying these values, they could be negative or they could be positive. Okay. So to give you a simple example, suppose one of the values is negative. So I know that uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, one upon minus two is basically minus one by two, right? And I know that 1 upon minus 2 is, uh, or minus 1 by 2 is less than 1. Okay. So, what I have is my 1 by minus 2 is less than 1. Now, if I take this minus 2 here, with the, what I'll do is, if I just take this minus 2 on this side, what I'll get is 1 is less than minus 2, which is wrong. So, this thing is correct, but this thing is wrong. The reason is when you do this, what you are essentially doing is you are multiplying both sides by minus 2. This is what you are doing. When we say we cross multiply, what we are saying is we are basically multiplying both sides by minus 2. So you are multiplying minus 2 here and you are multiplying minus 2 here. But when you multiply both sides by a negative, then what happens is that the inequality reverses this is a problem which we have not accounted for when we did this straight away cross multiplication so this is something which you have to be wary of this is something i made a mistake in uh, my school 10th standard uh, you might have also made a mistake back then this was something new that we did back in 9th, 10th standard, I remember. So, uh, this is something which students continue to make a mistake in. So, in the, uh, in the heat of the moment of trying to solve the problem fast, people just cross multiply and proceed without thinking about could the values been, have been negative or not. Okay, so here's the catch that these values could be negative. So, you need to make cases. All right, so you need to make cases and then solve this inequality. So let's make cases now. So what was the problem again? We could copy the problem. That would be easier. is out on your own so just be patient for another four five minutes uh, yes sorry, i disconnected for a bit uh, uh, so you need to make cases here cases, uh, both these things are positive both these things are negative okay so case is uh, x minus Two is positive and x plus three is also positive. Okay, so what is that case? So that case, see, x minus two is positive means that x is greater than two, and x plus three is positive is x is greater 
equal to minus 3. So, x must be greater than 2 and x must be greater than minus 3. So, on the real number line, x greater than 2 is, so this is your 0, this is minus 3, this is 2. So, x greater than 2 is this region and x greater than minus 3 is this region. So, the intersection is this one. So, this is basically x greater than 2. Alright? So, case 1 is essentially the intersection of these two things is x greater than 2. So, x is greater than 2 when you make such a case. Both these things are positive, so it can be multiplied. So, in that case, you can Cross multiplying without being equal to x plus 2 into x plus 2 into x minus 2. You are sure you are going to join. Actually, I am having internet issues. Okay, actually, my internet is uh, creating issues here. It is reconnecting again and again. So, I don't think it's an issue with your internet, guys. But I don't know. I don't know why it's happening. But mostly it doesn't happen. It's happening today. Uh, let's hope it doesn't happen again. Uh, okay, so case one is x greater than 2. This is the case we solved. And in this case, we saw x is then equal to uh, uh, minus half was the answer. So, while solving this inequality, the final answer we get is x less than equals to minus half. Okay. So, for x greater than 2, I want to find cases where x is less than equals to half. So, no such case will exist. And I need to add pages, open page. Okay, so, for x greater than 2, the case I am looking, so again, draw the number line. So, you have to be very patient here. Okay, so, there there is no shortcut. You have to make cases and everything. So, this is 0, this is 2 and this is minus half. So, you are saying that for x greater than 2, I want to find the values of x which are less than or equals to half. There is no intersection happening here. So, the final answer here is no such x exists which is simultaneously greater than 2 and less than or equals to minus half. Okay. So, in case 1, you have no solution. Then you do case 2. Okay. So case 2 again come back to these uh, values. Let me just stick it up. Okay. Okay. So I am focusing on x minus 2 and I am focusing on x minus 2 and x plus 3. Right. Uh, so another second make is that x plus 3 is positive and x minus 2 is negative. Okay. So, x plus 3 being positive means what? That x is greater than minus 3 and x is less than 2. Right. So, on the real number 9, again, x greater than minus 3 and x less than 2. So, x greater than, so this is your 0. So, so x greater than minus 3 is this case. And x less than 2 is this case. Okay, so, so the intersection of these two things is x belonging to minus 3. Two.
Uh, I'm really sorry about the internet. Just uh, I just need to get through this question, so just bear with my internet for another two three minutes. Okay. Uh, X. So yeah. Uh, so the, the this case is X belonging to minus three two. So that is the case that I am looking at now. Okay, X uh, between minus three and two. Now, uh, in this case, what will happen is X plus three is positive, but X minus two is negative. So when you cross multiply, uh, one of the quantities that you multiply with is so this is X plus one upon X minus two less than equal to X plus two upon X plus three. Okay, so when you cross multiply, okay, so when you cross multiply, one of the quantities that you are multiplying with is negative, the other is positive. So since one of the quantities is negative, equality will exchange once. The other quantity is positive, so inequality will not exchange. So when you cross multiply, you will get x plus one into x plus three greater than equals to x minus two into x plus two. Okay. So it is basically the reverse of this inequality which you which we solved here. Let me call this as inequality one, and uh, this as inequality two. So inequality one and inequality two are exact opposites of each other. Okay. So for inequality one, if we saw that the value of x is for x less than equals to half. Inequality two, the valid values would be x greater than equals to half. Okay, so the valid range is between minus three and two, which is this green range. And in this green range, we are okay with values which are greater than equals to sorry, greater than equals to what was minus half? Tha. Yeah, minus half. So here we had less than equals to minus half, so there will have greater than equals to minus. Half. So greater than equals to minus half. So this is your minus half. So greater than equals to minus half will be this region. Okay. So the intersection of the green and the pink region. So the case is the case two is x belonging to minus three to two open. And in this case, the valid values of x are x belonging to x greater than equals to minus half. So x belonging to minus half to infinity. So the intersection of these two sets is going to be x belonging to minus half to two. Okay. You can as well solve this inequality, but since I have already solved it, I'm giving you. Because that would also serve as a practice for you. Uh, you shortcuts. I'm using shortcuts because uh, this lecture has extended too much. Yeah, this lecture is extended too much, and uh, my internet is also giving me a time. And the final case is uh, so case one was x greater than two. Uh, case two was x between minus three and two. Now case three would be x less than three, less than minus three. So in this case again, the inequality will go back to the previous. Previous case because when x is less than minus three, then uh, x plus three is also negative, and x minus two is also negative. Right, so both these things are going to be negative. So both the denominators are negative. Both these things are going to be negative. So since both these things are negative. Uh, when you cross multiply, the inequality will change its direction two times. So in the end, you will get the same inequality. So you will get again inequality one. So inequality one was x less than equals to minus half. This case is 
x less than equal less than less than minus three, and x less than equals minus half. So on real number line, if you plot it, the case is less than minus three. So it is this region, and the valid values are x less than equals to minus half. So it is this region. So the intersection is this area. Okay, so that would be x belonging to negative infinity to minus three open. Okay. All right. So I'll stop here. I see that most of the students have already left. It became too long. This uh, lecture became longer than I expected. Uh, but it usually takes this much time. It is important topic, and now that, that I have covered this, uh, it doesn't mean that the problem set is going to be e easy. There are a lot of problems in this uh, in the notes that I used. Uh, other than that, there will be some more. Uh, the, set, the assignment which I have shared is something that you have to submit by Friday night, and then we'll discuss it uh, in the coming weekend. So next weekend we'll discuss this problem set uh, for sure. So, yeah, uh, try doing this problems. Do revise this lecture uh, once before you proceed with uh, trying to solve the problems. Okay. All right. So I'll see you guys uh, on uh, Saturday. All right. And uh, yeah. Best of luck for this assignment. Any doubts? Do we have any doubts? I hope. Mm, I think. There won't be any doubts when the lecture extends. People usually don't have the patience to ask doubts. You can ask me doubts later also. Not an issue. Okay, revise the problems before revise this question, uh, this uh, lecture before you proceed with solving the problem set. It's no, it's a difficult problem set. Okay, right. you guys on Saturday. Bye.